It's a summer pattern that holds tough as we head toward Halloween weekend. Wait until you see the updated numbers. The Valley View Ferry shut down as dive teams searched the river after what investigators believe to be human remains were found. And deputies have arrested a man who they say shot his girlfriend five times. More on that story coming up. This is WKYT News at 4. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Amber Philpott reporting. A little chilly this morning, but this afternoon is picture perfect here in the bluegrass. But it looks like some cooler weather is trying to blow into our area. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris, today is just gorgeous. Yeah, it really is. Gusty winds out there. Amber, we've talked about for the past several days and really for the past few weeks how this pattern was going to give us some ups and some downs, and those ups would outweigh the downs. That's happening out there today. It's going to happen again as we go into the seven day forecast. We're looking at our WKYT weather garden, and the big difference today that I'm noticing with the leaves a lot of them are gone. All of a sudden now, the trees are shedding those beautiful fall colors. No wonder you've got winds gusting 20, 25 miles an hour. Look at the temperature surging in from the southwest, mid and upper 70s across much of central. And Eastern Kentucky. Now, if you're out this evening, we're going to stay in the 60s. A mild one. Winds will actually pick up the pace a little bit. We can hit 30 miles an hour in some areas of central Kentucky by around 11 o'clock. That's ahead of a cold front. Defender radar network showing some clouds increasing on the western horizon. Another spectacular fiery sunset. Broken band of showers, thunderstorms stretching from around Chicago back toward parts of the St. Louis area. That's just ahead of our front. That front by tomorrow is right on top of central and eastern Kentucky, and that will unleash some chillier air that will stick around for about a day and a half, and then it's up, up, and away toward Halloween and even into the first few days of November. The updated seven day forecast looks a lot like early September when I come back in a few minutes, Amber. Chris, we'll see you then. Thank you. Possible human remains found in the Kentucky River. The Valley View Ferry remains closed this afternoon as investigators continue searching. This all started over the weekend as a training exercise near the Valley View Ferry. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has been tracking the investigation all day. She joins us now from the scene with the latest. The Valley View Ferry closed since 8 o'clock this morning. Dive teams searching the river here behind me after what investigators believe to be human remains were found over the weekend. Lexington police say some vehicles were spotted dumped in the area several months ago. Dive teams waiting for a day with good weather and water conditions to retrieve those vehicles, also using it as a training exercise. That day was on Saturday, and they say when pulling up one of those vehicles, Finding something, turning the exercise into an investigation involving police and the coroner. When they brought up one of the vehicles, uh, it split in two, so they got, only got about half of it, and it had been in the water for an extended period of time. Um, when they brought that vehicle up, uh, we're not sure if these bones that they found were associated with that particular vehicle. Uh, because they could have been drugged from the water. Uh, but that's what we're here today to try to find out, bring the rest of that vehicle up and see if there's any other uh, human remains in it. Again, says while they did wait for ideal water conditions, the dive teams are still working through zero visibility. It's going to be a feel thing to the bottom and where they've drugged this. Uh, vehicle from. And the coroner says because they do believe those bones had been in the water for quite some time, there is a chance they will not be able to find any DNA. In Fayette County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And speaking of, Ginn says if they are unable to find DNA, they will have to try other ways to identify the remains. Lexington police are investigating a report claiming more than $8,000 was stolen from the Tates Creek Elementary School PTA. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, records show that a suspect has been identified, but so far no arrest has been made. We'll have more on this story ahead on WKYT News at 6. We're working on a number of other stories for you on WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick joins us now from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Amber. Man is in the Laurel County Jail after deputies say he shot his girlfriend five times. And wanton endangerment. 
Deputies say they were called to a home off of Lawn Chadwell Road, just south of London, for a reported shooting early this morning. And once they arrived, the victim told police that Johnson had shot her following an argument. Uh, we found out uh, in the course of our investigation that there had been some arguing going on at the residence earlier in the day and that sometime last night late that he had apparently backed her into a corner and fired his pistol as many as five times, striking her, causing serious injuries. Deputies say a five-year-old was inside the home at the time. We're told the victim was flown to UK hospital. We'll have more on the investigation on WKYT News at 5 o'clock. A Kentucky high school student is accused of trying to attack his principal. Not County deputies say they found 19-year-old Brendan Neese passed out in a chair, and when they searched him, found prescription pills. And that's when deputies say Neese attacked the principal. We'll have more on that ahead on WKYT News at 4.30. State, state officials want to remind you that seasonal restrictions on outdoor burning are in effect right now. Fall forest fire season started on October 1st. It goes until December 15th. It is illegal for any person to burn between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Kentucky Division of Forestry says because of the dry conditions right now, they're asking people to not do any outdoor burning. We'll have more on the warning ahead on WKYT News at 6 o'clock. That's a quick look at some of the news in progress. Amber, back to you. Sam, thank you. Now to some stories making headlines across the nation at four. With just 13 days to go before Election Day, both Donald Trump and Mike Pence are breaking with a traditional election playbook, spending time outside of the battleground states. This comes just as a new poll shows Donald Trump holding a slight lead in Florida, a state Trump himself says is a must win. Scott McLean has this report. It's an unconventional campaign move, even for an unconventional candidate. With the notable exception of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, this is the most coveted piece of real estate in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump spent the morning opening his brand new hotel. Critics question the time off the trail so close to the election, but not his campaign. And we're very excited to show America what this man actually does. He fixes things, he builds things. The grand opening speech had a clear political message. My theme today is five words under budget and ahead of schedule. We don't hear those words too often in government, but you will. Trump's running mate Mike Pence is also taking a detour, this one to reliably Republican Utah where Trump is holding on to a less than comfortable lead. But Trump's work in battleground states may be paying off. The latest New Hampshire poll shows him closing the gap to just four points. And in Florida, a new poll shows him with a slight two-point lead. Both polls are within the margin of error. Oh, well, thank you. Hillary Clinton is spending her 69th birthday fighting for support in Florida. But she also took time Tuesday to accept an endorsement from Adele, though she can't win the British singer's vote. Beyond the Washington ribbon cutting, Trump promised to focus on North Carolina, New Hampshire, and Florida. Nationally, he is slowly closing the gap, but with a new ABC News poll showing him still nine points down, it's an uphill battle to win. In Washington, I'm Scott McLean. Federal investigators are leading the search for an Oklahoma man accused of killing two family members and shooting two police officers over the weekend. 38 year old Michael Vance allegedly shot one officer in the foot and another in the leg Sunday night before making off in a patrol car. Vance is also suspected of a shooting or shooting rather a fifth person at a convenience store. Well, tonight is game two of the World Series. It's no secret there is a lot of interest in this year's series as Cleveland hasn't won since 19. And Chicago hasn't even been in the World Series since 1945. And thanks to a stolen base in last night's game, a Kentucky based food chain is giving out free food. Taco Bell will be handing out free Doritos Locos Tacos to fans next Wednesday from 2 to 6 p.m. It is part of their Steal a Base, Steal a Taco promotion. Cleveland Indian shortstop Francisco Lindor is the taco hero who stole a base in last night's game, which was a 6 0 win over. Over the Chicago Cubs. Toyota is recalling more vehicles due to faulty Takata airbags. The details in Money Watch. And Target is offering more deals in an attempt to turn around performance. That's also coming up on WKYT. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family.
Welcome back in. AT&T is launching a streaming TV service next month. That begins today's Money Watch. The online video service is called Direct TV Now and includes 100 channels of programming. It will cost $35 a month, undercutting most cable companies. The largest auto recall of all time has just become even larger. Today, Toyota announced it's recalling another 5.8 million vehicles around the world because of Takata's exploding airbags. The Takata airbags have been known to explode. They were supplied to leading car makers around the world and have already been linked to at least 11 deaths in the U.S. and hundreds of injuries globally. Wednesday's recall brings the total number of vehicles Toyota has recalled since the start of the Takata scandal to more than 23 million. Four and a half million of those vehicles are here in the U.S. Affected, affected cars include the hugely popular models like the Corolla, the Yaris, and Edios. Volkswagen will now have to pay out the largest auto scandal settlement in U.S. history. A federal judge has approved a $15 billion settlement for claims following the emissions cheating controversy. VW owners can get cash payments between $5,100 and $10,000 each for returning their vehicles. 475,000 owners can start Start getting those buybacks next week. With a lackluster performance year for Target, the big box retailer hopes to turn it all around by offering more deal driven promotions, more TV advertisements, and extending its free shipping offer until January. Target predicts despite uncertainty around the presidential elections, consumer spending will remain robust this holiday season. Chipotle is still struggling to improve its earnings. After a major food safety scare from a year ago, to boost sales, Chipotle has given out millions of free burritos, launched a loyalty program, and released food safety ads. The Mexican chain is even considering desserts and more high-tech options. Despite these efforts, Chipotle is still hurting from the E. coli breakout that made some customers ill. Chipotle says profit plummeted 95% in the quarter. I'm Deanne Stevens. Out and about today is Halloween week, and we are trying to escape Waveland. We'll explain what that's all about when we return here on WKYT. Escape. Escape Waveland. Hey, good to see Deanne all dressed up for. Ha oh, wait, my bad. We'll get to her in just a minute. We'll talk about the weather out there over the next. I know, that's bad, huh? Weather over the next couple of days, anything but scary. We'll explain with the Halloween forecast next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. I hope you're having a great middle of the work week. What's not to like about it? You got the sun, you still got some fall colors doing their thing out there, and gusty winds, and here comes a cold front in the town over the next 24 hours. Live look at nine sky cams, a little more cloud cover into E Town, into the Florence area, back toward Louisville. Farther east you go. It's mostly sunny from Moorhead to Jackson into Corbin. So, again, winds are really gusting up. Look at Bowling Green, 82 degrees. It's the summer that doesn't want to let go. Upper 60s, northern Kentucky. It gets a whole lot colder. Look at Cleveland. It's 43 degrees, and they're going to play a World Series game up there tonight. 43 into Cleveland, 82 into Bowling Green, 83 into Nashville. Can you pick out where the warm front is there? That is a heck of a temperature gradient. What's 40 degrees? Among friends, over just a short piece of real estate to our northwest, temperatures take a little tumble behind a cold front that has a little broken band of some showers and thunderstorms out ahead of it. Here are the clouds that are increasing this evening. So, sunset lovers with a little ice crystal cloud showing up on the western skyline over the next few hours should be a fiery sunset yet again. So, this chilly air behind the front will arrive in here for the day tomorrow. It's cooler, it's normal, it's typical. Nothing like what we have today. So we'll kind of hang out 60 to 65, though farther south and southeast that you go, you're going to be warmer deeper into the day. And at any point tomorrow, gusty shower is possible. Those winds tomorrow are really going to crank up as well. Let's go out and about with the hour by hour forecast this evening. You like the 60s? You like the 60s all night? Yep, I got it for you. Early tomorrow morning, though, a little bit of rain increasing. Late afternoon model runs, by the way. Have more moisture tomorrow than what we were looking at a little earlier. So, a little better shot for some rain tomorrow into the afternoon as the temperatures drop. Five o'clock, pick out the front. 70 Williamsburg, 59 Lexington, 57 into Covington. That's that chillier air that is coming in from the north. Tomorrow evening, we're going to drop it into the 40s into most of central and eastern Kentucky. And then it is game on 
for a chilly start to our Friday. What this, you're seeing clouds on here, what I think is happening with this model is that it's showing where it thinks fog is going to develop. If you stay away from the fog, some frost is possible Friday morning, upper 30s to low 40s, depending on exactly where you are. Then the rest of that Friday forecast, this model runs a little cooler than some of the others. So it keeps northern, northeastern parts of the area in the 50s with the 60s creeping on in. I'll kind of split the difference and be a little more optimistic with that Friday thermometer. Winds tonight, by 11 o'clock, those gusts reach 25 to 30. And late tonight, tomorrow morning, we could be talking about 30 to 35 miles per hour with some of those gusts. Now we go into a pattern that is full of warmer temperatures. Take that pumpkin, put it back a day. It jumped on me. Uh, so we go into Monday, which is nothing spooky on that Halloween forecast with highs in the 70s. Let's check on traffic with Officer Don. Well, police are working an injury collision. This one's at South Point and Clearwater Way. It looks like at least two cars involved in that crash, uh, and they just cleared the one at Manowar and Trent Boulevard. Drive times this afternoon so far to Nicholasville, 13 minutes, to Georgetown, about 16, and to Paris, about 21. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. Escape Waveland is Lexington's newest 30 minute escape game, and it takes place in a historic hump mansion. Deanne Stevens is out and about today with more. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here at the beautiful Waveland State Historic Site. And if you've never had the opportunity to see inside this historical home, it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I got to tell you, this week things are looking a little different and a lot spookier here at Waveland. It's because they're taking part in this whole Escape Waveland games. It looks like uh, spooky fun, I should say. Michelle is with us. And Michelle, you guys have participated with Waveland and what you guys have done the last couple years. This year, you've got a twist on it. Yes, usually Escape Waveland is an Escape Waveland. It's just the Waveland Haunted House. But this year, we're doing a series of escape games. Uh, this one is House Call. And down in the slave quarters, we have Serial Killer, and they're two very fun, interesting um, escape games that you have to get through. I'm trying to escape the, the, uh, the creepy clown that's making his way around here. So escape games is kind of like the game, like breakout games or something mm -hmm. that you see, but it's done just specifically for Halloween. I understand there's different clues um, that are part of the game. We have Spike, who is with us now, who is the director of the games. And Spike, tell us how it works when folks come in. So basically, you get locked in rooms, and uh, you've got clues throughout the rooms. As you can see from him showing you around the room, you can't tell where they are. So you have to figure out where they are and how to escape the room in order to leave the room. Uh, you have about 30 minutes for both the games, and uh, if you don't make it in the 30 minutes. Uh, we've got a little surprise for you. <laughs> I can only imagine. All right, we got Trixie and Stitches over there mm -hmm. playing the game. Do people need to sign up? Do they show up? How does it work? We're headed into Halloween weekend. You can book at escapewaveland.com in advance, and they're actually setting up to come out here so you can book on site now. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, you have about a four hour window to book online, or you can come out here and, and fill in available spots. Okay, so you too can try and escape Waveland. They are running throughout Halloween weekend, even running throughout Halloween night. I'm Deanne Stevens, <laughs> escaping the creepy clowns here. Back to you guys. <laughs> Get out of there, Deanne. An experimental drug to treat Alzheimer's disease is showing promise that's ahead in better living. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $164 million, and Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $35 million. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Researchers are linking air pollution to blood vessel damage in healthy young adults. Tiny pieces of solid or liquid pollution can damage blood vessels in young adults. That's according to some new research in American Heart Association Journal. Researchers tracked 72 healthy, non-smoking young adults for three winters and found the pollution from cars, factories, power plants, fires, and smoking increased their risk for high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. Researchers working on an experimental drug 
for Alzheimer's disease says it is preventing inflammation in the brain, which is linked to the disease. The drug, known as NTRX7, also removes abnormal protein clumps that can cause inflammation and damage neurons. A new study finds a single dose of dextrose gel rubbed inside a newborn's mouth an hour after birth can lower the baby's risk of low blood sugar. Nearly one in three infants is at risk for low blood sugar levels, which raises a baby's risk of impaired nervous system development. Currently, doctors treat low blood sugar with formula, which can make it harder to establish breastfeeding. All right, let's head over to Chris for another check of the weather. Chris, today's one of those days you need to be outside doing anything, right? You're exactly right. You know, we had a chance to get outside, uh, work on uh, some uh, shoots for work a little earlier this afternoon. I don't think any of us were complaining about being forced outside on a work day, especially with gusty winds and temperatures into the 70s. 77 Lexington, Moorhead 73. Earlier, we were just a few hours ago, 60s across the region. That warm front lifting its way through the area and temperatures really taking off underneath that. Eventually, we're going to get in on some changes, and those changes already beginning to blow on in with some clouds into parts of central and western Kentucky. That's ahead of a strong cold front that ushers in a chance for some rain tomorrow. We need the rain. Some of us would like to see it cool down a little bit. We'll at least get a little of uh, both worlds into the day Thursday. But it's full steam ahead toward Halloween and early November, and the thermometers keep going up. We'll show you how high they go straight ahead. WKYT News at 430 starts now.